like, no red nails, no red flags here, baby. Uh, AD, you still got some red flags, sis, because we learned at the end that AD did, in fact, still go on a date with Matthew. Why? Why? Welcome back to my channel. It's the Lady Rose here. Remember to keep it cool, classy, never trashy. Unless they try you, you gotta get nasty, okay? Pull up still her me and like Sarah Ann, okay? <laughs> Let me stop. As you can see, today, we are gathered here today in holy matrimony to celebrate the I do's and the I don'ts of Love is Blind. So Love is Blind has been sweeping the nation, baby. I mean, from the tea to the mess to the, the love triangles, the love stars. And I am one of those people that is clearly obsessed with Love is Blind. I tune in every week. I watch all the recaps. So I decided to do my own recap myself. So today we are going to be recapping the Love is Blind season six reunion. Without further ado, let's get into this video. <laughs> Nick and Vanessa and the producers of Love is Blind was on the cast members next. They said, if you guys are not going to honor your contracts and not be all up on social media talking crap, we're going to put our foot on your necks. They addressed every T all the drama. They address people who were making posts, doing interviews. They address everything. And in the past seasons, they didn't really address things that were going on on social media, but they had their foot on the contestants next. Okay. Start off talking to Laura and Jeremy. So they bring out the person that Jeremy is currently seeing and surprise, surprise, guess who it is? It's, it's, it's Sarah Ann. Like, come on. We, we knew that. We knew that. We knew that. She said, any, meeny, miny, mo, pick me. You got him, sis. And you can keep him. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. <laughs> you got him. And the crazy thing about it is, is the saying that I've heard reigns true. How you get him is how you lose him. You can never keep a man that doesn't want to be kept. And I, oh. And for Jeremy to have shown Sarah Ann all of these red flags and for her to still pursue him was insane. Laura pops, pops up on the screen. It looks like she's like zooming in or whatever. Like she's on Zoom or like on a call because she's in Barcelona, Spain for work. How do y'all do this? Oh my gosh. Okay. She's in Barcelona, Spain for work. So she's not able to actually physically be at the reunion, but it doesn't matter. Laura didn't let up in person, in virtual, on camera, in bar message, whatever. Laura is going to stand her ground. Laura doesn't need anyone to speak for her. Laura can speak for herself. She is the definition of a strong woman who is going to stand on business. And that's what Laura did. She stood on business and she didn't play. She did not let up until Sarah Ann and Jeremy took accountability and apologized. And eventually they did, but not before they went back and forth. I came upstairs. I told you what happened. So I'll take, Jeremy, I'll, I'll admit my fault on this part. I'm not waiting up for you. I should have been on the front porch waiting for your ass. They address, they even address the drama that Jeremy had with his past fiance. Basically, if you didn't know, the fiance's, ex fiance's mother went online, posted a picture of Jeremy with her and basically said he applied to be on the show while he was still engaged. Now, according to Jeremy, they had already broken up and sold the house before he applied to be on the show, whatever and whatever. At this point, to be completely honest, I don't believe a word that comes out of Jeremy's mouth. He seems like he's a chronological liar and he uses, he's, he uses reason and he, 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 he is so calculated and manipulative. He uses instances and things that are true to cover his lies. So within his lies are truths, but at the end of the day, 
he is still a liar. So I don't believe- So that was a f***ing lie. At the reunion, we were able to see a talk between Laura and Sarah Ann that we never saw before. Basically, it was Laura just trying to give Sarah Ann advice like, be sure you know who you watch out for him. He's a liar. And Sarah Ann, again, not taking accountability. Like during the honeymoon, at that time, they don't have their phones. But right when Sarah Ann left the show, she sends Jeremy a DM basically telling him like, I understand you made the decision that you made, but if you ever want to slide back over these ways, you can, basically. And she tries to come to Laura, woman to woman, saying, that was never my intention. My intention was never to sway him. My intention was never to disrespect you. Oh, honey, yes, it was because you did. Like, oh, Sarah Ann is not a girl's girl. She doesn't talk to any of the castmates. She didn't form any connections with the girls. As we know from previous seasons, most of the women remained pretty cordial or cool to a certain extent. Seems like Jeremy's first go-to when he's in a relationship is to trap a woman by moving her into his home. Like that's like what he does. Like he even makes a comment like his thing is sharing his location. Your thing is moving women into your house and not being in a place where you're gonna actually marry them. That's your thing. Your thing is control. Your thing is lies. Those, that, those are your things. And Sarah Ann doesn't understand you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And you won the stupidest prize of them all. Jeremiah. Sarah Ann was wrong. I understand this is an experiment. And in the experiment, Sarah Ann had her chance to fight for Jeremy. She did not fight for Jeremy. He said, I'm done. I'm picking Laura. And she said, okay. And then she wants to send this text message. And then said that when she entered the real world, she was still in the experiment. No, Sarah Ann, when you entered the real world, you were not in the experiment anymore. Let's look at past seasons where people actually did switch and go back to the person that they originally were going to choose with Zach and Bliss. Bliss wasn't sitting here texting Zach, hitting Zach up. She gracefully said, you picked the wrong person. I'll let you figure that out. Then he had to fight for Bliss. Sarah Ann just was like, you want me? Okay, you can have me. <laughs> like she didn't even make him work for it. Like she came to him. And like I said, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And honey, as far as I'm concerned, Jeremy is not a prize. As far as I'm concerned, Jeremy is a liability. And you're going to regret the decisions that you made in this. And they also touched on the video that Sarah Ann posted. <laughs> Just all the videos Sarah Ann posted, like she posted a video in Jeremy's house and basically they called her out for basically ruining the ending for people because no one knew that her and Jeremy were, were together. However, you know, internet people, we're crazy. We know how to put two and two together. We're also not stupid. So it's like Sarah Ann knew what she was doing. Sarah Ann wanted people to figure out, well, I'm still with this man. Like, I am still with this man. I'm having a Jackie and, um, what's his name moment? We're having a Jackie moment. Like, we're still together. So, so it has to be real. Like, you guys can't be mad at me anymore because we're still together. We're in a real relationship now. Like, stop being mad at me. Stop attacking me. Vanessa makes it clear that the show did not make a mockery of Laura, but Jeremy and Sarah Ann made a mockery of Laura and Jeremy's engagement. Laura is dating someone and they end the conversation with both Sierra Ann and Jeremy apologizing and moving on. And Laura seems to be uh, satisfied with that. She just wanted them to take accountability for the fact that they handled the situation wrong and the fact that they could have handled it a better way. And that's all Laura ever wanted was simply an apology and for them to take accountability. And towards the end of the call that they had with Laura, she did bring a bean dip. She went in and she apologized profusely to AD about discussing Bean Dip, about the whole Bean Dip gate and all of that stuff. If you don't know, Bean Dip is basically when you 
flick a woman's tit. She told Jeremy about the inside joke of bean dip and told Jeremy to bean dip AD. And Jeremy mentions this in the show and this causes a whole big thing. And it really raises the question with the over-sexualization of Black women, the over-sexualization of us and how SA is not a joke. And I appreciate Laura apologizing for it. However, the joke should have never been made in the first place. It just doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me. I'm not going to hammer her about it because we all make mistakes. We've all said things that were cruel. We've all said things that we regret. And we just so happen to not have done it on national TV, but she understands the extent and how important apologizing to AD was, although I do feel like it was inappropriate. It should have never been said. It should have never even been done because let's let's talk about it. Women can SA other women. Like it's, it's so it's okay for you to do it to her, but when Jeremy says he's gonna do it, it's not okay. It's not okay altogether. So we move on from that and then we go to Trevor, my baby Trevor. Protect Trevor at all costs. When I tell you, when Trevor got, when Trevor got on the screen, he was stutter, 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 stutter. She make me stutter when I hit. She th 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 make me stutter, stutter. Like she was stuttering. He had nothing to say. That, and the way that Nick and Vanessa are on their next, this, this reunion, it's so crazy. They brought up the text messages that Trevor had with his now ex-girlfriend. I'm crying. Trevor then says, can I call you in 30 minutes? She said, I missed you so much. Trevor wrote, I love you more than anything in this world, and I'm going to marry you. She says, yes, call me. I can't wait. Trevor says, I hope you know how much I love you and had to pretend that this wasn't real life to say anything I said. She responds with, it's okay. He was still dating while on the show. Trevor didn't have anything to say. He does say that the only person he needs to give an explanation to is Chelsea. And I agree. I don't think he has to explain himself. Personally, Nick does say this show isn't for people to come on and get famous, but no tea, no shade. I know someone that is going to be on the show who was actually paid to be on the show. So if the show isn't for people to come on and be famous, there wouldn't be no show. People don't come on TV to not be seen. So I don't agree with that rhetoric, but I do agree with the fact that Trevor needs to have a conversation with Chelsea. The fact that he hasn't had a conversation with Chelsea yet is, <sighs> is, is, is crazy. But I will say Trevor, put Trevor in, in a movie, put Trevor on the big screen. Cause Trevor is an amazing, amazing actor. Trevor was sitting there. You really, it almost felt like he was reading the world's best monologue but then why did you come on the show and then he says that he came on the show because he wanted to find someone different than what he would have went for in the real world stop the cap and i guess in the real world he would have went for a toxic relationship because he is a toxic person you know trevor reminds me of those people that knows how he comes off you know, he looks hard, he looks buff, but he comes off like his, this little teddy bear and he plays on people's emotions. He knows how to get people to like him. He knows how to get people to feel sorry for him. I even almost started feeling sorry for him when he started talking. But when I tell you the castmates, the castmates had their foot on his neck. They was not letting up. Chelsea says there was a reason she didn't pick him. She knew in her heart, she had an intuition that it wasn't right. She didn't know at the time, but now she knows why. And she's happy she made the choice that she made, even though it was a shit show. <laughs> her relationship was a shit show. But it's better than being with a fraud. I feel like Chelsea and Trevor's relationship would have been 10 times worse than Chelsea and Jimmy's relationship.
Brittany also goes on to say how it's disrespectful to the experiment that he came on there for the wrong reasons. But how can you tell someone they came on the show for the wrong reasons? Everyone has their own reasons for everything. You can't force someone to have the same reasons that you have for doing things. Like, yes, he went on the show. He was involved with someone. He says that it wasn't his girlfriend, but he was telling the girl that he loved her in the text messages and that he wants to marry her. So I think he was just being toxic like he said he was and I truly believe that he did have some feelings for Chelsea but I also feel like he was also playing a role I feel like Trevor was playing the nice guy role he wanted to be labeled as a nice guy and he wanted to garner sympathy from the public and he whether he went on to the altar or whether he did it he was never going to get married but he was going to use this to fuel whatever was next I don't know what's next for him. I think someone talked about him being on Perfect Match. I don't know why they would cast him for Perfect Match, but we'll see how that goes. Vanessa makes a statement. Oh, I see you don't have red nails anymore. No red, and, and AD's like, no red nails, no red flags here, baby. Uh, AD, you still got some red flags, sis, because we learned at the end that AD did in fact still go on a date with Matthew. Why? Why? <laughs> both Clay, both Clay and AD agree. It was hard to watch the show back. Um, Clay actually says that AD is the love of his life and that he made a mistake. And she said, well, baby, you had your chance. You go, girl. You go, girl. Because Clay, Clay made me so mad throughout the whole season. It's like the fact that his dad never takes accountability and will never take accountability for the role that he had or has in shaping the way that Clay views relationships is the same as why Clay will never take accountability for his own actions in his relationships themselves. It is not daddy's fault that you can't be faithful. And he kept alluding to the fact that he's gonna cheat in the show because Clay is a habitual cheater. His ex-girlfriend comes out and says, Clay got hoes, Clay's a dog. Clay is gonna play in your face, he's gonna cheat. That's the type of man that he is. And Clay claims that he's a different man now. He claims that he went to therapy. He claims that he is a changed man and that if he was on the experiment today, he'd be ready to be married now. You a day late and a dollar short, man. Like you a day late and a dollar short. Just like AD said, you had your chance, baby. You blew it. You had your chance and you blew it. Like, come on. But they asked them, would you ever date again? She says, next question. And he says, absolutely, yes. AD, you better not. She does say he had his chance and he blew it, but she also didn't answer the question. So to me, that leaves room and that leaves it open to interpretation. And seeing as AD still went out with Matthew, even he, even though he played in her face, I don't put it past her to not date, but at least meet up with him, see him outside of the show, have some type of a relationship with him. I don't know. It was a touching moment because in the Black community, Black men are actually expected to cheat. Black men and men in general are looked at as primal. They're looked at as unable to settle down, unable to choose one person that that their natural instinct is to just fawn and be with multiple women. But what really touched my heart is when Brett and Clay had their moment. You know, Clay mentioned that his first time watching the show was actually while he was on the show, which is crazy. If I go on a show, I'm going to watch it first. But when watching it, he said that he was looking at how this person was coming and they presented themselves. He looked at how this person presented themselves and he said, that's a husband. 
that's husband material right there. That's someone that knows what they're talking about. That's someone that deserves to be married. That is going to be a great husband to someone. And he was talking about Brett. And what really touched my heart is the fact that Brett explained, I didn't come from the best circumstances either, but I came out of it a better person. I came out of it knowing and choosing not to make the same mistakes that my parents made, choosing not to be the person that people expected me to be. He said that I ended up with Tiffany, someone who gave me space to grow as a man, someone who gave me space to be comfortable and confident in myself. And in turn, I was able to create that sense of, you know, security within myself, knowing I am going to be a good husband. I am a good husband. I'm going to be a good husband and I'm going to be a good father whenever that happens, if that's what they want to do. You know, he, he was able to build that confidence up by not being a not being a factor of circumstance, not leaning into his circumstance, but defying that and coming out a better person because of it. And I feel like it's important for Black men to have those role models to look up to, to see positive relationships, because I feel like toxicity is so hammered into our society when it comes to relationships that that was a beautiful moment to see. So shout out to you, Brett. I just love Brett and Tiffany, like Black excellence, Black love, like I always tell black women do not go on these dating shows but Brett and Tiffany they are the exception I was watching a video about this and they were saying that America wasn't able to see so much of Amy and Johnny like most of the time we saw AD we saw you know AD and Clay we saw Chelsea and Jimmy a lot a lot. We saw them a lot. We didn't really get to see Amy and Johnny's love story unravel. They didn't really create a good storyline with Amy and Johnny that made us fall in love with them. So when they ended up together, we were just like, oh, okay. They seem like they would be together. Like they're cute and all. They're cute and everything. But it's like they're not looked at as an iconic couple like other couples in the past have been. And I will say that the whole birth control thing was like the the biggest thing that was shown on the show. So the former castmates also asked the new castmates questions. So they asked, what does Autumn think about Jessica going on the show? She says that Autumn loves it. She also says that this was the first time Autumn got a chance to see her cry, which is kind of insane. Um, I guess I don't understand the propensity of being a single mother and having to be strong because I am not a single mother. So for Autumn to see her mother cry and be vulnerable on television is very beautiful. And then they also asked, they asked Johnny, does he know what a condom is? He takes accountability for not understanding birth control and, you know. He says they're still not on birth control. They understand it now. He's been educated. So, and they asked, what did Chelsea think of the conversation between Jess and Laura at the bar? She said it added to her insecurities and it hurt. She is on good terms with Jess. And just takes accountability, like I said, for that not being her finest moment and saying that she 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 shouldn't she shouldn't have talked like that, especially when Chelsea is supposed to be her friend. You know, as women, we get into this mode of we're in competition with another woman and we forget that everyone has feelings and that we should really think about the other person. Sometimes we get too wrapped up in how we feel. And I think in that moment, Jess was only thinking about how she felt and she took accountability for that. And I love that. So, and then they said, does Jeremy share his location with Sarah Ann? Yes, he does. And... We get into the, what did your friend think about Chelsea sharing your secret? So they asked Jimmy, what do, what does the, his friends think about Chelsea sharing their secret that they were intimate on national television? And he says that his friends are mad at her. So who cares? Who cares, Jimmy? Like at this point, your relationship with your friends that were girls were more important to you than saving your engagement so we do not care 
here. Chelsea talks about how they didn't show a lot of the reasons why she was being so insecure and why she wasn't believing Jimmy when he said that he loved her. Because in all complete honesty, Jimmy is the type of person that says what someone wants to hear, but his actions does not match up with his words. And we saw that with Jess. He said that the reason he didn't want to be with Jess or the reason he made his final decision to choose Chelsea was because of how Jess treated him on their last date. He said that Jess came in, she was rude to him, she stormed out after 10 minutes of talking to her, I mean, talking to him, and none of that was true. Jess actually sat with him for an hour and a half being attentive, being understanding, being loving, being kind, not pressuring him at all. He asked for a break. They actually came back. She sat with him again for another 50 minutes and he still couldn't tell Jess how he felt about her. Now, what woman in anyone's mind would just continue to sit there with a man trying to pull something out of him that just isn't there? He kept saying that just having a child was not the reason why he didn't pick her, but it absolutely was because he didn't have any other reasons. He didn't have any other reasonings. Of course, Jess is the type of person that stands on business. She is, is the type of person that is blunt and honest and knows what she wants, but she's also a kind and loving person. And that's something that, that I feel like throughout the show, people wanted to paint her as a villain. Um, she did take accountability for being distasteful when she was at the bar with Laura talking about Jimmy and how he looked and how him seeing me is going to be like dangling temptation right in front of him. She did say that that wasn't her best moment and she took accountability for that. And the crazy thing about it is, is her and Chelsea are actually still friends. Jess's daughter, Autumn, actually calls Chelsea auntie chelsea so that just goes to show how much of good people these women are without jimmy jimmy brings out the bad in people he gaslights people he makes people think that they're crazy because he's gonna tell you whatever you want to hear but he's going to go and do whatever is the opposite of what he's saying which is super confusing and i will say I, I kind of felt bad for Jimmy the whole time. He was looking like he was dreading it being his turn. He just knew that people were going to dig into him. And the crazy thing about it is, is that Chelsea is getting the most hate. I know that Jimmy is getting hate as well, but Chelsea is getting hate. People are talking about her looks. People are talking about talking about her in general people are bullying her straight up bullying her but chelsea has been able to take it and take it with a grain of salt and make it into a joke try to find humor in it but people are literally cyber bullying her for her looks and the fact that jimmy is trying to play this card like oh woe is me i have the heart i have the short end of the stick what was me i have the short end of the stick no Chelsea is literally getting bullied. She's literally getting cyberbullied, body shamed. She's she's literally going through it and she still has a smile on her face and she's still trying to find humor out of it. And I feel like, Jimmy, you are not a victim. Stop trying to make yourself a victim. The whole thing with Chelsea bringing up the friend that he slept with, it is extremely inappropriate for you to bring someone to meet your future wife that you have had relationships or relations with. It is extremely disrespectful to be with someone that you were with in the past, continuing to talk to them over the phone, hang out with them while you are engaged. Now, do I think that Chelsea could have did a better job of expressing her emotions and just saying flat out, just like Jess did in the pods. He told Jess about the friend that he slept with in the pods. And she immediately said, nope, if we ended up together, you cannot be friends with her no more, which I think is probably another reason why he didn't pick her. But with Chelsea, she made it seem like she was still okay with him being friends with her. And then 
after the fact blew up and said that she wasn't. And at the end of the day, you should do whatever your person is comfortable with. I feel like at that point, Jimmy had been trying to make it work for so long. He didn't care if it worked or if it didn't work because he was just tired. He was tired. And him saying that her telling national TV that he slept with one of his friends was the nail in the coffin for him. I believe that to a certain extent because... If it wasn't such a big deal, then you wouldn't care about her mentioning it, mentioning it. And I understand you're saying you're trying to protect your friend because your friend isn't the one that came on national TV or your friend isn't the one that signed up for this experiment. But your friend still signed up to go and meet your fiance after she was riding your dick like after she previously rode your dick and have seen you naked she talked to your fiance y'all even talked about how y'all how you cried during sex and it's not clear which friend it was that he slept with but it's clear that one of those girls he brought to meet Chelsea, he had relationships with and he had relations with. And that was very inappropriate. And as a woman, I would never be comfortable with my fiance still being close with someone that he had sexual relations with. That's just for Jimmy to just keep talking about her putting his business out there. No, you put your business out there. You brought her on this show. You made you let this woman to meet your fiance and then after the fact you told her that you slept with this woman do you y'all know chelsea is a wreck you think that chelsea would have been comfortable meeting this girl if she known that they slept together before they met and and what's not clear this is all speculation but i feel like he told her after the fact and that rubbed Chelsea the wrong way as well. As women, sometimes when you tell us stuff, you're throwing stuff on us. We're like, okay, that's cool. When you have a time to sit and really think about stuff, it starts to wear on you. And you start to think like, no, that's really not good. No, I'm really not okay with that. That's actually bothering me right now. I don't like that. So I understand where Chelsea was coming from. She had every right to be uncomfortable. Jimmy... He says that he has all these girlfriends because they allow him to be emotionally vulnerable. It sounds like Jimmy has friends that he treats like they are in relationships together without the sexual nature of an actual relationship. They have an emotional attachment relationship. They have an emotional relationship. It sounds like Jimmy and his friends are close to the point where it's inappropriately close, in my opinion. And he says that his friends are now mad at him for telling her, but what did you expect? That's his fiance, like girl, fiance, this is friend and this is fiance. She is over you. She is over you. He shouldn't even be messing with you no more. But see, he didn't value Chelsea enough and he didn't love Chelsea enough to cut her off. So that's on him. And Chelsea gets into the Megan Fox comments and she says, you know what? I'm just trying to make humor out of it. I'm not trying to take it too seriously. I'm really just not trying to feed into the negativity. And I love that, Chelsea. All you can do is laugh because me personally, if Chelsea's hair was black, I think she would actually look like Megan Fox. Her chin is a little bit longer than Megan Fox's, but she has the same eyes, eyebrows, nose as Megan Fox. I swear to God. Like, like Chelsea is not far off. She looks like a mix between Carrie Underwood and Megan Fox. She really does. And she's still a beautiful girl. So I don't understand what the issue is. They show a clip of Zach and Bliss's baby shower, which is beautiful. And they also talk about Alexa being five months pregnant. She talks about her journey with getting pregnant and how hard it was because they were having infertility issues. And the week before they're about to start IVR, they actually tested positive and are five months pregnant. So congratulations to the Love is Blind babies. Vanessa, you got your babies. Now quit asking people to have babies. Get out of people's wombs and uteruses because just like Alexa some people have issues having children or cannot have children so let's stay out of people's wombs please
we go on to Kenneth and Brittany. They're still friends, which is kind of crazy. They said that they're close. They're best friends. They're like this. They talk every day. Brittany says that she's been to Kenneth's job and she says that she's met his coworkers and they're very, very close. And they say that if one of them, if one of them got into a relationship, they would have to just respect that and respect the relationship that they were in. And, you know, they addressed everything, all the drama, all the tea that happened online, but they did not address the one elephant in the room. And that is Kenneth's sexuality. Gay! I know that they probably would have got canceled for that. They probably would have got canceled for that, but we all want to know. You know, we all want to know. There was someone that came out to be Kenneth's cousin, alleging to be Kenneth's cousin, saying that, yeah, my cousin gay. Like, <laughs> we just want to know. We want to understand. Like, so that's your gay best friend, Brittany. Let's just say what it is. And they talk about them not having sex. They said, like, so why not just try it? Why not just test it out? And Brittany says, like, that's an addition. That should not be the reason. That should not be the thing that gets me to fall in love with someone. That should not be the thing that solidifies my love with someone. That should just be an addition. I don't I don't care to test it out before the marriage because that should not be the basis of our marriage. And I, I get it and I respect it. I definitely respect it. They even called Kenneth out on being on his phone. He took accountability for being on his phone, but he still, he still gave the same BS answer that he was on his phone for his job. He's a principal. Last time I checked, school is from Monday through Friday, seven to three. Who are you talking to from school? What do you guys have to talk about? I still don't believe that's why he was on his phone. He says that's why he was on his phone. We're just going to leave it at that. But all in all, him and Brittany are in a good place. They're apparently very, very close. They talk every day. So... I guess Brittany likes being disrespected. And Kenneth does touch on and talk about the whole gaslighting. Sometimes I'm affectionate and you're not. When? Last night when I woke you up knowing you had work at 5 a.m., you pushed me off of you. Because I was tired. If you're not asleep and awake when it's convenient for me, that doesn't give intimacy. That doesn't give I want to be loved. That actually gives me the ick. But that's not how sleep works. Do you know, you see, does that make sense? No. This is why things are not progressing and we have to be introspective about be that. Be careful, you're going to hurt your watch. Please don't interrupt me when I'm trying to gaslight you. I'm sorry, I'll be if quiet you don't now. you have a cray for me or for us. Uh, um, when they broke up, how Kenneth gaslit her. And he's basically saying that everybody processes everything differently. On camera, it may have seemed like I didn't care and I wasn't impacted. But afterwards, I called Clay and I was I was a mess. I was distraught and I was very emotional. And I still don't believe him. But at the same time, it doesn't really matter if they don't want to be together. They don't want to be together. And we just going to leave it at that. So we get into the previous couples and I will say, I, I honestly feel like Love is Blind brought the previous couples on to say like, hey, our experiment actually does work. There are actual couples that are still together. Like, don't cancel us. Don't cancel our show. Like, don't don't attack us online. We actually have real people. They kept emphasizing how this is real life. These are people's real lives. And we have couples that are still together today. I feel like they brought them on to do damage control because of their horrible, horrible horrible casting process and we learned that Colleen and Matt are living together now and we also learned that Chelsea and Kwame are still together of course and Chelsea is casting for Love is Blind now so now the issues that Chelsea and Kwame had in the past where Kwame wanted to travel and Chelsea couldn't really travel because her job is not really a, a thing anymore because Chelsea has a more flexible job with Love is Blind and then Micah and Izzy and Jessica are going to be on The Perfect Match and ding 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 Izzy got his credit together yay Izzy got credit now Izzy got credit now so hopefully
hopefully whoever he ends up with on Perfect Match is eating off of a real plate. <laughs> and we end off the show with them saying, oh, we had a good time. Oh, let's eat this food, basically. So all in all, I will say that I don't really know what I wanted from this reunion. It was messy, but it wasn't messy in a good way. And I do apologize if my intro or my opening with Laura and Jeremy and Sarah Ann was kind of sporadic and kind of unorganized because that's how the, that's how it started off. They came out swinging. And I feel like Love is Blind, it kind of made me feel like Love is Blind is coming to an end almost. I don't know. It's been a national thing national thing people have been tuning in to love is blind all over the country so i don't know if they will cancel it but i do think that they brought on former castmates just to show the world like hey this experiment does work for some people if you do it right and if you have the right intentions then this experiment could work for you so it was almost like marketing for the next season almost i think and I don't know if I like that because like I said, I don't care about the old castmates. I want the new tea. They had their time. They had after the altar. They had all of this stuff. So we don't, we don't need to see them no more. I still love you though, Brett and Tiffany. I still love you though. We don't need to see them. We don't want to talk to them. We don't want to talk about them. We want to get into the tea, into the mess of this season. That was kind of getting on my nerves. And I will say it was giving me anxiety throughout the whole time because they were being messy. Like Nick and Vanessa was bringing up social media drama, which is like, am I watching Love is Blind Reunion or a tea channel on YouTube? Like, which one is it? Like, I don't want to say that I was disappointed by the reunion because they touched on basically every single thing they could have possibly touched on except for Kenneth's sexuality, but I get why they didn't. But I don't know. I was still left unsatisfied by the reunion. I don't know what made me feel so unsatisfied. Maybe because this season was so unsatisfying. Maybe because this season was literally from the very beginning, you could say none of these people are going to end up together. The only people that are probably going to get married is Amy and Johnny. And that's exactly what happened. Of course, there was tea and drama along the way, but I feel like the outside tea and drama outside of the show is what actually fueled the show, not the show itself. I don't know. The show was actually kind of boring this season. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Like I said, I still tuned in. I tune in to the commentary. I love watching commentary on Love is Blind. I love watching people dissect it. I love all of that, but I don't like the portrayal of Black love in this. I don't like the people that they picked. I don't like the casting that was that was chosen. They cast it completely wrong. I personally don't think that anyone that has a child should be going on Love is Blind because that is very dangerous. You don't know how your child and that person is gonna interact with each other. You don't know if that person is either even good with children. And I feel like when it comes to children, you have to introduce and slowly, slowly, introduce people into their lives and I just don't think that two weeks is enough time to make a decision on if you're going to marry someone who has a child let alone a basically a teenager which is kind of crazy teenagers are something else <laughs> trust me I was a teenage girl and I was something else so I do think that the casting could be better so Chelsea girl get on that Chelsea you better start casting better Chelsea all in all this love is blind season was the messiest season yet and i didn't think anything could top uche <laughs> but this season was full of mess i'm exhausted i honestly need to take a nap after watching this season i probably will take a break from reality tv for a while but i don't know what do you guys think what do you think about love is blind season six drop a comment so that's it for this video. Remember to keep it cool, classy, never trashy, unless they try you and you got to get nasty. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm out.